my friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. Today's video is going to be my haul for the month of August. This is the third month in a row that I've had to say, if you're new here, Typically, I don't do a, a haul video. I just do my haul in the TBR takedown. But when I have a really big haul, I do it separately, which means once again, I have a fantastically large book haul. Is that a good thing? I'm not really sure yet. Um, this month it is north of 30 books. They are not all here yet, but I am counting the ones that have not made it to the house yet. Um, because they are parts of series that I've purchased the whole series of and I'm just waiting for them to come in from all over the globe. So first we're going to go through the books that I got from the discount store and then I have two stacks of books that I got from when I was on vacation with Julian Amber and then I have a pre-order that I got from Amazon. Let's start with my Amazon pre-order. I got Safe and Sound, a renter friendly guide to home repair by Mercury Stardust. Uh, if you don't know, Mercury Stardust is a Instagram and TikTok personality. Um, they are the trans handyman. It is a trans woman who helps renters do things to their homes that are renter friendly and will also help solve some of their problems. I love Mercury. She's fantastic. She is wonderful. She is the reason I was able to get these shelves on the walls, my friends. There were tips and tricks that Mercury had that helped me be able to find the studs in these walls to be able to get the shelves up and not have to worry about them falling off of the wall. And even before that, I had pre-ordered this book because I wanted to not only support Mercury, but I also thought that because um, if you don't know, my mom had a stroke last year and my mom is very much like the handy person around our house. But um, because she's not able to do everything that she was able to do in the past, now I have to do more things and I don't really know how to do handy things. So I wanted to be able to do more things myself without having to ask for help around the house. Um, this book has sections on fun things like it does deal a lot with being a renter, which I am not. We own our home. Um, but if you are a renter, it has uh, information on uh, apartment hunting, moving in and how to create a home, um, how to request a repair with your landlord, and also some troubleshooting, um, building a toolkit, how to build the toolkit for your rental space. Uh, and there's also at the end um, information on um, moving out of your apartment, uh, tenant and laws resources for every state, um, also at the end. Uh, but for the actual like parts that I thought would be helpful more for me are um, like the bathroom faucets and drains, toilets, showers, wall repair, painting and mounting, doors, floors and cabinets, electrical repairs, mold, pests and weather prepping, appliance repairs and upkeep, and there's a section called security and safety that is about um, smoke detectors, go bags for emergencies, pets and children, and having technicians in your home. So I think that this is going to be a very helpful guide for anyone who either owns a home or rents um, and wants to be a little more helpful and handy around the house. So definitely pick this up. Very excited um, to have this and kind of do like a quick flip through to see what's all in here. So if in the future I am having an issue, I will be able to resort revert to this and be like, yes, it's in here. I'll have all the information I need right here. Okay, discount store time. Um, I got One of Us Is Next by Karen M. McManus. This is the follow-up to One of Us Is Lying, which I read and liked, and this was on sale for a couple of dollars. So I picked it up. This Wicked Fate by Kaylin Bayron. This is the sequel to This Poison Heart, which I read this month and actually really enjoyed. Um, so I decided to pick up the sequel. This follows a girl named, what is her name? This follows Breezes who is raised by her two moms. She knows that she was adopted as a child and a lawyer comes to their house and is like, hey, um, your aunt died and left you this property. Briseis is able to uh, make plants grow and trees and all kinds of things in New York where they live kind of react weirdly to her. And so she's very nervous about going to this estate where there's nature everywhere. And we get to follow her along on a mystery and a journey. And it was a wild ride and a fun time. And I'm excited to pick up book two. I then picked up Back in a Spell by Lana Harper. This is the third book in the Witches of Thistle, Thistle Grove series. Um, I read Paybacks, which last year I 
bought from Bad to Curse, which is the second book earlier this year. Have I read it yet? No. Did I go ahead and buy the third book because I found it for two dollars? Yes. I also picked up books two and three of the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail, Car by Gail Carriger. I mixed that all up. Uh, Changeless and Blameless. The first book is Soulless. These books are set in Victorian London and our main character Alexia Terabody is a soulless which is basically a person who um, has the ability to when they touch a um, supernatural being like a werewolf or a vampire or a ghost are able to render them back to a human state not the ghost the ghost i think they can kill but the werewolf and the vampire they make them human if they touch them it's a thing um so this is like an alternate reality of our universe where ghosts werewolves vampires exist if you don't believe that they exist in our world if you do believe that they exist in our world then it might actually be our world depends on how you feel um this is a five book series and i have all five books ordered. The other three are currently on their way. Um, this was a find at the discount store, but these are the UK editions, so I had to order my other three copies from the UK to get sizes that matched. First, we get to the used books that I picked up while I was on vacation with Julie and Amber. Um, it is an entire 15 book series, and uh, the bookstore that Julie was doing her signing at, which is Cupboard Maker Books, in I believe it's technically an Enola but it might be in Harrisburg. I don't know. It's in Pennsylvania. I'll link the store down below. You should 100% follow them on Instagram because they do rescue cats and they are adorable. And also the bookstore is amazing. They have a lot of really hard to find used books, things that you may either haven't heard of or have heard of. They, especially the ones that we were paying attention to, were like a whole bunch of Babysitter's Club, Nancy Drew, um, Sweet Valley, Twins. They didn't have any Sweet Valley high end when we were there, but like all of these like old series that you may have loved when you were a teenager, they have this stuff in massive amounts. Um, they have some newer things as well, but they mostly have older back stock of books and it is fantastic. So what I picked up was a series that I have never heard of and the series is called Circle of Three by Isabel Bird. It is a 15 book series and I currently have, I currently have nine of the 15. I got seven of them, I think at the store itself and then I've ordered seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't remember. I ordered all of the ones that I didn't get from the bookstore um, from Abe Books, which is uh, basically just an online seller of um, where you can go like through used bookstores and find books that they have that they're selling online. Um, but it is a 15 book series uh, about three girls who are witches and that's legitimately all I know. Um, the ones I got from Cupboard Maker Books were for like four dollars a piece and the ones I've been getting from secondhand stores have been around like five to seven a piece. Um, so I literally just bought this entire series but it's not all here yet. Right now I have three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and thirteen. So waiting for these to get here. Also these are books I'm gonna have to read physically with my eyeballs, so it will probably take me 20 years to read these, much like the Sweep series. I'm excited to have them, okay? If you have read these, like if you read these when you were a teen, or if you read these when they were coming out in the early 2000s, let me know. Uh, next is the stack of books that I got when we went to a Books A Million in Harrisburg. I don't have a Books A Million here. I mean, I do. It's an hour or so away. More than an hour away. Uh, that's about an hour and 20 minutes I think because again in Ohio we measure by time and not by distance but it was a fun time and I got a lot of books and uh, it's fine. Uh, I was definitely getting prepared for spooky season so okay. Um, first I got The Witch's Cookbook by Fortuna Duar. I believe that is a D. I could be wrong. Uh, 50 Wickedly Delicious Witchcraft Inspired Recipes. It does have 50 recipes. Some of them look absolutely delicious. Um, like, where's the one thing that I found when I opened it and went, yes, must have. Uh, Bad Vibes Banishing Blueberry Coffee Cake. Would I, had I sat at the bookstore and actually looked through all of these, would I have purchased this? No. Mostly because a lot of it is just like some kind of a, I can't say the word charcuterie, 
uh, properly, but uh, essentially a lot of it is just like a grazing board of some sort or very low like actual work effort to put things together. But there are a few things in here that I am very excited to eat or to try. Like literally this one, dark moon figs and berries is like figs and berries on a plate. I mean, peaceful watermelon pizza. It's a watermelon that you throw Greek yogurt and banana and raspberries and blackberries and honey on top of it. Like, to me, that's not really a recipe. That's an assembly guide. But it, it is what it is. It is what it is. There's some interesting things in here that I'm excited to try. Mostly the coffee cake. I also picked up Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Um, I obviously needed to pick up more books for spooky season because, you know, I try to read 31 books in October and I was like, I must have all the spooky books. So I bought a lot of spooky books. Uh, this is a mid grade. It deals with three friends who are on a school trip and I think there's like a cornfield and there's a bunch of scarecrows and I think they have to save their class from the scarecrows. Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. This is an adult horror novel which is not usually my jam but I've heard a lot of good things about this and I really wanted to try it because I recently watched Scooby-Doo mm, which Scooby-Doo did I watch was it 2012 listen I actually sat and watched Scooby-Doo was it Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc Scooby-Doo I don't know it was Scooby-Doo there was two seasons of it there's only been two seasons of it it was like them in their town and like the weird things going on in the town. It was like one of the best put together plots that I've ever seen from anything ever, let alone a cartoon based off of a 70s cartoon. Like it was so good. So uh, this is four friends plus their dog in the 1970s. They find a man guilty of some crimes. He goes to jail. Some odd years later in the 90s, the at this point, one of the friends has died and the other friends are having nightmares about his passing. The guy that they arrested in the past actually is getting out of jail. And one of the friends is like, yo, I don't think this guy was guilty. And he's like, no, I definitely wasn't guilty. And so they're trying to figure out what happened to their friend and also who actually committed the crime that they were solving in the past. I picked up two Darcy Coats, uh, The Haunting of Lee Harker and The Full Croft Ghosts. I know this one involves two kids that go to their grandparents house. Yeah, their elderly grandparents house is full of ghosts. It's, it's Darcy Coats and there's ghosts. Um, Haunting of Lee Harker, again, Darcy Coats, there's ghosts. Uh, Lee Harker's quiet suburban home was her sanctuary for more than a decade until things abruptly changed. Curtain opens by themselves. Radios turn on and off. Dark figure looms in the shadows of her bedroom door at night. No thank you. Watching her, waiting for her to finally let down her guard enough to fall asleep. No thanks. Yeah. So it's Darcy Coates. You know I love her. Books. Okay. Girl from the Well by Ren Chepeco. I've actually already read this. Really loved this. This was one of our author tube chat book club books last year or maybe even the year before. I'm not really sure. Kate and I both enjoyed this and they had a copy and I was like, you know, I think I would like to own that. Uh, this follows a girl who's from a well. She's a ghost from a well and she is haunting a boy and she has to help him save someone, I think his cousin. I don't remember the plot, okay? I just remember it was very creepy and I liked it. Okay. In Nightfall by Suzanne Young. Um, this was one of my most anticipated reads for last year. No, for this year. Yeah, this year. This is the year we're in, 2023. Uh, it came out in like March. Gorgeous cover. It was sold to me as uh, Buffy Meets the Vampire Slayer cross The Lost Boys, the movie with Kiefer Sutherland. And um, I've already read this now and it got like a two star. It might've been a three. It was 2.75. Listen, I don't remember, but here's my thing. If you've never watched The Lost Boys, you will probably like this book. If you have watched The Lost Boys, you are gonna know everything that happens in this book because it is almost exactly scene for scene, The Lost Boys. There's a couple things that are different. Some things take place in different spots. There are a couple things that take place in this that aren't part of The Lost Boys. There is a history in this that you don't get in The Lost Boys. Um, there's like an interesting history part of it, which is the reason why it got a three star and not like a one star because it is just a gender flipped The Lost Boys. And it has a gorgeous cover that also didn't hurt its rating because it got like a five for cover. If you haven't watched The Lost Boys and you wonder what it's about, it's about vampires in a small town. Okay. I'm very confused by this because it's two books in a series, but it's technically a trilogy. So why did they just release two of the books? I don't know. Um, Diaries of a Haunting. So this is actually two books. Um, Diary of a Haunting 
and Possession. Uh, and these are by M. Verano. And they sounded super creepy. Letters, photographs, and a journal all left behind in the harrowing aftermath. This is everything that remains after the mysterious and terrifying circumstances surrounding two individuals haunted by the unbelievable. For Paige, it begins when she moves to Idaho with her mom and her little brother into a drafty old mansion where strange things start to happen, as it always does. With words appearing on the walls and her brother roaming around in the house at night, Paige takes it upon herself to uncover what's tormenting her family, but the deeper she digs, the clearer it all becomes. Whatever is in the house has no intention of backing down without a fight. And then the second one is the same rings true for Letitia at the mysterious undiagnosed illness that has taken over her body. Her symptoms start with fevers and chills, but soon escalate to the unimaginable. She begins to wonder if the voices she hears and the cryptic notes she finds in her own writing are signs of insanity or signs of something much more sinister, something demonic. Uh, both of their terrifying journeys are here for you to witness these nightmares, blah, 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 blah. I seen this and I had to have it. Okay, I don't have reasons. That, that is the reason. And the last book that I picked up was Spellbound by F.T. Lukens. Um, I actually read this earlier this year. Really loved it. It is a queer romance with some witchy vibes. So it is two witchy dudes who are queer, who have to save their mentors who are rivals. They have to come together to save their mentors who are rivals against each other from uh, basically the big bat. And it was a fun time. The ending was a little lackluster, I will give it that, but the book itself was a fun time and I needed to have it um, so that I can put it over here with its with its mate. Um, so this is Ever After. There's also another book that I think recently came out that I also need to have from this author, so. Living the dream over here. So these are all of the books that I bought in August, um, except for the two that are weird shaped because I knew this was going to be risky. If you have read any of these, let me know about them in the comments below, especially the Circle of Three um, series. I especially would want to know about those. If you made it this far in the video or are not feeling chatty, leave me a skull emoji in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!